Hello, I'm in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and wanted to talk uh, about a topic I was asked this morning about a question around blockchain and the instrument ledger. Blockchain is uh, another term for it is called distributed ledger, hyperledger, something that undergirded Bitcoin. And uh, many of the objectives of blockchain are the similar to the instrument ledger in a metric engine. One of the major ones that is similar is the desire to eliminate reconciliation. You'll notice in my first videos I talked about if we could do everything from the transaction detail, it would eliminate data quality issues in many respects and reconciliation issues because transaction details are the originating book of record. The blockchain is built upon a similar concept, but it takes it further that the originating transactions, the recording of those originating transactions, aren't just stored and used internally. They're shared between parties uh, in separate entities, separate companies, separate uh, enterprises, separate individuals. All of that uh, transactional detail is shared. But we know that from these discussions that we can't report off of transactional detail forever. The volumes of data continue to grow and producing balances allows us to tune our IT environment, our compute capacity in order to produce the snapshots, the periodic views of where we're at, what's happening and how things got there. So we have to get to balances. I think that that's one thing that the blockchain environment is going to have to come to grips with before it becomes useful in a generalized purpose. Otherwise, if we take the blockchain data that is transaction focused and we make a copy of those, those chains in order to use in other reporting systems, we've then undermined the principle of store once, share many times by making the copies. The copies create needs for reconciliation and getting to balances and the various kinds of balances. Where is that done within the blockchain to analytical process data supply chain? All of those questions are going to have to be answered. There's another aspect here that I think we'll have to consider in the blockchain is how much of the data that is, is, is really should we be sharing externally? Certainly in my accounting view, uh, are things that there are aspects of that that aren't useful to another party. They're my own internal view of, of what my positions look like and how much of that data really is needed externally or not. Could it be possible for me to store data in an internal blockchain for those pieces that are internally needed and also have external views of, of a portion of that data, but when I need a consolidated view, I read them together? using the same kind of technology. I think that holds promise. So there, there are common threads between blockchains and instrument ledger in that they're trying to eliminate reconciliation by reducing the, the duplication of data and eliminating the balances, various kinds of balances that are made using transaction detail whenever possible. There's a slight difference though as well in that the instrument ledger and metric engine are focused on the analytical processes involved, whereas the, to date the blockchain has been much more focused on the transaction processing. Those speeds and, and, and things around the data capture, the business event capture and use of those business events for a limited period of time until those things pass into historical uh, oblivion are no longer needed because the transactions have passed and we no longer use them effectively. So those slight differences and some overlap between them. We'll talk more in later episodes about what are those details around the blockchain and the instrument ledger.